Morning guys, uh, nice Sunday morning here, as you can see, coffee time, before shave time. Um, I want to talk about the trading stuff, and I think before we get there, you have to understand that this is predominantly I'm trading in cryptocurrencies. Now, I'll go through a few things, because I know the, the mass media out there, um, are obviously we know the media is controlled anyway, if you don't, you should wake up for the last 20 years. <laughs> um, but they don't like it. And I'll go through why, and I'll go through what the differences are. First thing is, the mass media often push Bitcoin as crypto. Bitcoin is a crypto. There's actually over 1,200 different types of cryptocurrencies out there and tokens. So you've got coins and tokens. Now, what you have is the mass media will push that the, there is no use for this, it's just a fad, it's speculative. It's actually incorrect. Bitcoin has value in the sense that it is actually a currency. It's actually more stable than many uh, fiats out there beyond the fact that it can't just print money, it's a fixed amount. There is mining, it's getting near to the end of the mining as well. So the fact is it's gonna get harder and harder to mine it, which means that the liquidity of it, um, well, it can be factored down to one millionth, but the point being is the value will increase because there is no more of it, which is not what you have with fiat. Um, this actually come out of the banking fiasco um, due to the collapse of the economies, etc., due to the greed of bankers and the way they run the systems. But anyway, so what you've got, Bitcoin has a value in many forms. First one is when you get into the crypto space is often Bitcoin is your main pivot. You'll, you'll sell your fiat and you'll buy Bitcoin. And then you once you have Bitcoin, you then will buy other cryptos or just hold it. So that, that's one thing, you, you'll you actually trade that in. Second thing is, you get peer-to-peer, -peer, where I will send somebody some money through doing a website or something. That is very common within the crypto space. So the fact is, it has liquidity through usage. It's not cheap enough for a cup of coffee yet, but at the same time, it's very common. For example, say somebody wants a video making, uh, sending $300 in Bitcoin is very normal. That's what, that's what you're looking at. Um, the other side of this being is as a long-term saving. Now, I know the banks, you'll be lucky to get 5%. I mean, a lot of time you're lucky to get 1% these days. But with Bitcoin, it is on the rise financially. And even when it has a retraction, it generally recovers because the market is expanding. It's still only around 1% of the population in the world actually even know this thing exists. Um, so the point being is that the market will expand, but if you're a, a saver, it's actually going up in value. Now, the reason I bring this into play here is where the separation of Bitcoin bubble and crypto bubble comes in. They're two different things, and this is where mass media focus. They focus on the crypto space is Bitcoin. It's not it's not at all. It, it's a currency. Um, in the same way, it's the equivalent of being a dollar that can't deflate itself. It, it can't, uh, sorry, inflate its own value by printing more money or devalue itself on purpose, you know, sorry, by printing more money. Um, in, in reality, it's market, true market value. Now, if you understand market, market value is based on trust or it's having some sort of value of some other form, like the gold standard, etc. cetera, um, Bitcoin's value comes from the fact of its liquidity, usage, and the price speculation, which still has a little bit of speculation in there, is because the liquidity will increase but the supply will decrease in the sense there will be no more generated in the near future. So that is Bitcoin. Crypto space, different arena. What you have in there is what are ICOs, uh, which they, they're called initial coin offerings, but they can also be called initial token offerings. Um, and basically, these are like investing in a future business. They have it. Ninety-nine percent of them haven't actually progressed into being a full-blown business. 
there a lot of them are ideas and this is where you could be very very careful because there is scams there is ponzi schemes there is what they i mean i don't know how people class mlm multi-level marketing different to ponzi schemes it's beyond me if it's relying on more investors coming in but anyway so you've got things like that you've got people that disappear with money so they take the investment and just vanish um and then you do have a lot of genuine projects but they may not be able to bear fruit because they don't have the ability or the technology isn't there. A recent one was somebody actually talking about doing Avatar. Now, don't get me wrong, I can understand wanting to have that sort of space age technology, but let's be honest here, it ain't gonna happen in the next decade. We don't have the infrastructure to even accommodate that sort of technology. Never mind actually trying to build the thing before you've got the infrastructure to actually use it. Um, so you do get some where you're just going, well, that ain't going to happen. So you've got to be aware that not all ICOs, ITOs are going to bear fruit and some of them will actually disappear with money, which is why the due diligence is important and it's why I don't promote them on this channel to, to go and research yourself because quite simply, there is a lot of risk with them. Um, you've got to understand what you're investing in. There also, also is market information where market prices move. So, for example, let's just say um, Ven, which is a Chinese company, um, they're developing a technology that will pretty much guarantee the logistics information um, and manufacturing and all the data relating to a purchase to the end user so that you could scan it and it'll tell you where it's made and all the information relating to that product. Now, the thing you get with that, thanks Zoe, what do you want? Right, okay. Um, so what you've got with that is the reality that they're looking at getting rid of a lot of the counterfeiting. Although, it won't, in all honesty, it's not gonna stop counterfeiting um, from people that would buy counterfeit anyway. Let's be honest, somebody who buys a $30 Prada handbag knows it's not original. Uh, but what it will stop is people having fake items sold as genuine, which is what that is. But they've already got a partnership in some form with BMW. So what you get with that sort of information coming out is a price spike. And as the, like all, mainly most markets, you buy on the rumors and sell on the news because once the news come out, there's a retraction because there's an initial interest and then people are sort of waiting for something else to happen and nothing happens because that was the news. The partnership can take six months, a year, whatever to develop. So buying on the rumor is important and then you sell on the news. You sell it just as it's peaking or just about to be released so that you get ahead of everybody else in dumping it. And then you come back in at a lower price and end up with more than you started with or take off some profits. But the point being is then is an example of one. Now, when you have these different types of ICOs, which would be in the traditional business sense called an IPO, which is an initial public offering, which is a business offering to the market, um, you would often need to have $300,000 to even play the game. You'd often need to have a broker. You'd often need to have the banks dealing with this stuff for you because you, they will not give you direct access to this stuff. Um, that's the whole point. A lot of this began with the realization that centralized banking systems control too much. And not only that, they're greedy. And when they get it wrong, they tax me and you to pay for it. We pay their mistakes, but they keep their profits regardless. Um, so this is where this is a shift because with this, all you need to do is buy your Bitcoin, sign up on the exchange, and you can start trading. Want to get into an ICO? You just go into their website and you buy directly through the website. You send them some uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc., and they'll send you back the tokens in their own currency because it could be, uh, well, it could be a coin or a token. It depends what what they're doing. Now, the di main difference I find between coins and tokens, coins are actually designed to be used like a monetary form. Tokens are generally what would be deemed a security or a utility 
um, in the sense that a security is basically an investment mechanism where you, the expectation is it will go up in price. That's a security and it's a, it's, it's a financial incentive. A utility, the easiest way of doing that is if you went to the ga car garage and you wanted to wash your car and you notice it started raining but you bought some tokens, you know, because you can get these plastic chips or whatever. Um, and they give you that and you think, you know what, I'm not washing the car today, I'll come back next week on the way back from wherever. Now that token is a utility token because it's been paid for a service. So some of the utilities will actually turn around and be like that. They will give you a service. The whole point being is that it's not expected to gain in value. It's for a transaction of a service. And there's an understanding that it's a service. This is where a lot of um, ICOs get in trouble because they classify themselves as utility. And if they're in the US, they can be reclassified as security by the analysis on the documents they put out and the, the fact that they're developing a business and it's actually not a utility. Um, so these things are happening. There is ways around it. Airdrops is a prime example where they airdrop tokens out to people and things like that. But you don't really need to know about that yet. Um, so as you can see, it's quite expansive. And the number of ICOs are growing. The number of um, the financial investments are growing. You've also got people like Goldman Sachs looking to get into the markets. Now, I'll tell you now, in my personal opinion, they're already in the markets. They just lie about it. That's the thing. And you'll see media swings with them, with, with the big financial sectors. And I mean, I, I was listening to the Kaiser report relating to the banks and they're saying about some of the ICOs trying to work with the banks and whatever. And he's right. He actually pointed out they don't want to work with it. They either want to own it or destroy it. They actually fear cryptocurrency. They fear the crypto markets because it will decentralize everything. It actually moves monetary value back to people. Now, when I started in this, I only put $400 in. My first trade was in Ant shares. Ant shares became NEO. And shares, when I bought it, was somewhere between two and four dollars. It's currently around eighty-four dollars, and it goes up and down. And even today, it's I think it's at eighty-two dollars now. I'm looking at buying it in around eighty to eighty-two because within the next twenty-four hours, it'll be around probably eighty-six, which means I'll put an auto sell on it um, once it peaks again and let it drop again, and then it's just a cycle of trading that I do with different different things. The important bit with this is you need to research. You need to spend a lot of time on this. You need to actually understand what you're investing in. You need to understand how to research an ICO. When I look at an ICO, I look at the team behind it. Are they even real? The information they post, is that even real? Is the white paper complete? Is there any value in it? Because there are some out there that have zero value whatsoever. You'll, you'll invest in it, but there's no actually no mechanism to actually increase the value of the tokens. Um, is the idea and concept genuine and realistic? Is the idea achievable? And is the time frames correct? Is the project team good enough to actually make this happen. Um, I'll give you an example. If you look at SafeX, there's, I, I mean, I didn't get into SafeX at day one, but it's been hovering around from what I've seen for three years. Dan, the guy behind that, has only just put a team together. That should have happened two years ago. On top of that, he's rewrote and we re, um, started the, the whole enterprise from day one yet again. Actually, in the last week, he's redone it again. Um, so the point being is, that guy was not capable of delivering it at day one on his own. He didn't have a team. He's in a better position now, but I don't think he has the leadership skills that would actually make the enterprise work. Doesn't mean they won't get there. It just means it'll take longer. 
you know, at the end of the day, this is the whole point. It took him years to even get to day one. Um, so it is important when you look at things, you have that information. The other thing is, if the team's good and the idea is okay, the team may be able to pivot. What do I mean by that? Android was originally written for cameras. Now look at it. That pivoted from cameras into what it is today in every single mobile phone, except for the iPhone. Um, yeah. Um, the point being is, if the team's strong enough, they can make it work regardless, because they'll they'll look at it and tweak it and change it, and they'll just get it there, um, as long as they believe in their own products. Now, that's just a few bits of information to take in before we even talk about trading. Um, so, if you've got questions on this, please ask. You know, put them in the comments below. But I wanted to put all this information out there first before we even talk about trading. Um, because you need to understand that the market is not simply just going like this. Well, it is, but you know, there's a lot more information to it. And there's a lot. To do a informed investment or an informed trade um, takes bits of information from all over the place. You've got things like updates coming up. They've got conferences coming up. They've got technology launches coming up. They've got testing going on. They've got um, the ability to actually deliver this. There's a lot of information. And I just want to share that before we even get to where I start talking about graphs and things. All right. Thanks for watching.